uh, in the name of Eurasian Research Institute, which is a branch of Ahmed Yesevi, International Turkish Kazakh University, I would like to greet and welcome you again. Uh, and thank you for taking your time and this great opportunity. And I also want to thank to uh, Baljan Hanım uh, for making this possible as well. He's, uh, she's a uh, hard uh, expert of the Institute and thanks again. So I would like to give the floor to you and we are very happy to uh, hear your expertise and hear your experiences about this significant issue. We actually provided all the abstract, the whole abstract uh, on the on the banner, so mm -hmm. um, it's more than one century ago. Uh, the experiences you will be talking about. So we are actually very thrilled uh, to hear uh, your research. So thanks again, and floor is yours. Thank you very much for the invitation for Bajan and you. It is a chance for me to show uh, some materials, not all of them but part of them and uh, just a, a, a good case because uh, as i know some weeks or months ago david Schonfei gave a lecture a presentation for you and uh, partly we worked together at especially the last uh, four or five years as baljan also uh, knows it and uh, just a very fresh publication. We have a, a book which published in Hungarian about this topic. It's a little bit uh, more about uh, letters and correspondence, but it's practically a diary, but also photographs partly. And um, this book uh, we hope uh, would be published also first maybe in Kyrgyz language, and then maybe other uh, Central Asian and maybe English or in Russian language too. So just the chance uh, to talk about uh, uh, this project also. I need to uh, gratitude uh, two persons, especially uh, besides David and Balshan. Uh, this is Laszlo Loitai, my colleague, social anthropologist, who helped me to translate the text uh, from Hungarian to English. So his uh, ex ex experience is quite important. And also Svetlana Gorsenina Rapin from Tashkent, uh, who um, helped to develop uh, this uh, photo project and uh, gave chance to publish uh, separately as a photo project in English. So that's all of these um, uh, circumstances of this uh, presentation. And uh, I try to read some uh, pages and then give some uh, explanations. So just that. Military occupations are often preceded by uh, expedition to far unknown to far unknown territories this inevitably serve colonial interest even when the explorers are from a different country than the later colonizers those explorers expeditions can be of a particularly colonial nature when they are carried out in the border zones of powerful colonial states Infrastructure can be understood as military jargon. For when a military power sets up facilities of running the newly colonized areas, this may include roads, road traffic to supply the army with weapons and ammunition, etc. Supply of water, supplies of energy, such as food, fodder, heating, and so forth. The primary aim of the infrastructure is to serve the army. Nevertheless, civilian forces, in particular administration, administrators of colonial institutions and their families can also use it. Sometimes local inhabitants can also benefit from the infrastructure in previously unexpected ways. Colonial 
Often military expeditions are just the first steps in the establishment of an infrastructure. The colonizers, especially the first explorers, often use the existing infrastructure of the local inhabitants for their purposes until they have set up their own. Imperialism is, in our interpretation, when the newly set up infrastructure is integrated and maintained by the administration as part of an empire. Imperialism can be uh, conceived as a system of information, a kind of imperial file catalog, where all matters, information, facts, and knowledge have their own place, role in interpretive context in the configuration of formerly gathered data and which can continuously be updated and used to assist new colonial endeavors. Orientalism can be used as a descriptive term for various different perspectives and attitudes. Said, Edward Said, uh, studied British and French Orientalists only in the approaches to Africa and Asia mostly. In our understanding, the term Orientalist can be extended and generalized, perhaps in line with the presumed intention of Said, in order to understand some of the finer critical details of, this, of its process. The need for analysis of other kinds of Orientalism, Orientalisms, for example, German or Austro-Hungarian, had already emerged before Said's ideas appeared. Those other orientalisms seem to show some unique imperial and nationalistic features. In this article, in this presentation, we are highlighting Hungarian orientalism, which certainly exhibits a particular national facet. The interest zones of Hungarian orientalism are the Balkan Peninsula, the areas of Turkic peoples in Europe and Anatolia, the Ural Mountains, the Caucasus, Siberia, Central Asia and Tibet, and also Mongolia and Manchuria, more and less. That is all the areas where Hungarian ancestors, that is related peoples, might have lived. Oriental ideas are stored in the imperial structure, as in, in our case, in the photo collections. And in fortunate circumstances, when European Orientalist ideas do not clash significantly with local realities, they can be taken and integrated into the overall imperial apparatus should local political or economic goals require that. Imperialists can be a system which accepts uh, and maintains oriental content and even gives it meaning, even when the content is partly the direct result of European ide ideations and self-reflections. The critical approach to orientalism, such as Said's, is, Said's mainly, is mainly based on analysis of texts. The second expedition of Giorgio Almashi has some textual sources which have been preserved like the diary compiled from, the, from his letters to his wife or the publication of his fellow expedition member, Dula Pritz. However, this study intends to focus on the images of Hungarian Orientalists that can be found in Almash's photo albums. We would like to demonstrate how Orientalism can also be manifested in visual material and how visual information can be transferred back into text. So just, um, I need to give some context details uh, to understand this idea. Uh, it is uh, Jordi Almash's biography and uh, family background, which is maybe not important, but somehow makes sense uh, what about this uh, uh, project. So I try to, because just we can show photos. Almashi, the Almashi family was an old Hungarian aristocratic family. The family's aristocratic roots go back to the conflicts with the Kuman people 
in the 13th, 13th century. George Almashi, so, George Almashi, or a German version, Georg von Almashi was born in 1867 in Fersholandwa. It is uh, just a territory of Slovenia. Not much is known of his childhood. It seems from his sister's family photo albums that he lived like an aristocrat and often visited other members of his extended family. According to the aristocratic customs of the day, he studied law. For a, for a while, he worked for the Austro-Hungarian Minister of Foreign, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His mother died tragically young in 1890. This might have been the reason for Omashi's sensitive and unstable personality. After her death, his father sold the castle and they moved to another one in Boroschenko uh, in the country of Vosch, today Bernstein in Burgenland, Austria. It seems that it was felt that he should now marry someone who could run his household. His first wife, Ilona Pittoni, came from an Italian aristocratic family background in South Carinthia. They had three children. The youngest, Laszlo, has become known from the popular novel and movie, The English Patient, where he is the hero. George Almashi showed an interest in zoology and ornith ornithology from a young age and had many zoologists, ornithologists, and botanist friends. He even had a taxidermy workshop in his castle. He was a hunter too, but not such a passionate one as his fellow traveler, Hubert, Hubert von Archer. In this picture, we can see the friends, the companions of the second expedition, expedition in uh, 1906. Between 1897 uh, and 1917, he lived the life of an active researcher. In 1897, uh, 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 his first major journey was to the Delta of Danube River, where he studied the native bird population. Later, he wrote a monograph on his findings and the experiences there. It was on this trip that he conceived the idea of a major expedition. He carried out his first nine-month-long Eastern expedition among the Kazakh and Kyrgyz peoples in 1900. He himself organized and financed the expedition. In his 1903 monograph, just I shown the picture, I need to move back. Uh -huh. I don't know. So this is the monograph, uh, 700 pages, unfortunately published only in Hungarian. So that's the reason now to make this presentation in English and it is the first attempt to show these things. So 1903 uh, monograph, Omashi gives a long account on how he organized the journey, detailing all the contacts he used Used. He developed many contacts with both the Austro-Hungarian and the Russian empires in the political period between 1897, his journey to the delta of, Danube, of the Danube, and March uh, 1900, the first expedition to Kazakh and Kyrgyz territories. He notes that uh, both individual and official circles supported him and acknowledges the common imperial multi-ethnic and aristocratic framework within which both the Romanov and Habsburg empires operated in allowing him to enter Turkestan, then a closed area, and freeing him from the border taxes he should have been paying on the vast amount of equipment he brought with him. He also describes the aid of the Hungarian Austrian authorities, authorities and the successful maneuvering he had to do. The foreign ministry in Vienna and embassy in St. Petersburg 
recommended him to a number of Austro-Hungarian representatives within Russia and also give him advance, advice and practical help. To obtain practical information, Almashi had extensive correspondence with explorers who had visited the area. He gives a list that includes Russian and German researchers from Tashkent and Jena, Russian bureaucrats of German origin from Kharkov, Russian gentlemen from St. Petersburg and Moscow, and Austrian consular engineer of French origin from Galazzi, and Hungarian consul in Tbilisi, and the Austrian vice consul of English origin in Baku. During his first Eastern expedition between March and December of 1900, he had followed an itinerary around Verni, Lake Balkash, Lake Isikl, Vzhevalsk, and Tianshan in the Hantengri region. One of the members of his expedition was Rudolf Stummer von Traunfels, zoologist and taxidermist, later professor of zoology at the University of Graz in Austria. Many Jigits worked uh, for his expedition, and the most famous of which was a man called Oruzbek. Oruzbek named his son Dr. Bey after Almashi. This son later became a general of the Soviet People's Commissariat of I Internal Affairs, NKVD, and the street has been named after Oruzbek's son in Karakol. Almashi lied people to address him as Mr. Doctor. The friendship between Almashi and Akim Kutsenko began during the first expedition. This is evidence to suggest that Kutsenko was the expedition's taxidermist. The first expedition was quite scientific in the sense that a great deal of energy was invested in zoological research. The expedition not only brought its own taxidermist, but also employed local taxidermists in addition to the Jigits. As mentioned, Almash's experience was published in, his, in this book, which was published in uh, 1903 in Budapest. In this work, descriptions of social, economic, and especially geographic, botanic, zoological details are very rich and accurate. Pictures of the Kazakh Bakshi and Duana are of high value in the history of shamanic research. In the 62 page long appendix, Almashi summarizes his findings on anthropology, linguistics, the economy, family and marriage, religion, superstitions, festivities, dress, jewelry, weapons, dwellings, household objects, home manufacturing, and so on. The expedition was partly on international enterprise and the Austrian element enriched the zoological aspect. This publication is a fine example of Hungarian Orientalism. Both the introduction and the ethnographic description fit the Turanist idea. Omashi met Vera Apraksin, an aristocratic lady of Russian background who became his second wife in the period between the two expeditions. In 1906, Almashi traveled to the Kazakh and Kyrgyz territories for the second time. The preparations of the second expedition were much less public. Therefore, much less is known about them. But we do know that Almashi had extensive correspondence in Russian with Governor M. A. Yonov, Mikhail Yefremovich Yonov, prior to the journey. He informed Yonov about his plans and ask for support. Like the first, Almashi himself organized and financed the second expedition. The uh, Yonov, sorry, Yonov was the governor of Semirechye in this period, in the very late and beginning of 20th century. The plan was to set out together with his friend Hubert von Archer, Later, upon the recommendation of Lajos Lóci, also uh, geologist, geographer, and uh, Turanist person, Omashi's friend, they allowed the young geographer, Dula Prince, to join them. 
the itinerary of the, this expedition was Andijan, Tian Shan, Isikul, Trevas, Narinkol, Kulja, Orenburg. The timeline, just to show more and less the route. The timeline was six months between the beginning of May and mid November 1906. The second expedition to Central Asia can be considered less ethnographic and scientific, but more explorative and geographical. This was largely due to the presence of the geographer Prince, though Almashi was the explorer. The original idea of the expedition was to explore an area around 200 kilometers long and 300 kilometers wide on the Tekkes Plain and the Agias River. Since they met an English expedition en route, they had to postpone their plans for a while. They had also planned to go as far as Ladakh, but this was never realized as now, now, as we know now. The relationship between Almashi and Prince became so acrimonious that they ceased working together and never met again in later life. Nevertheless, only Prince published the written account about the second expedition and not Almashi. The second expedition had much less of an oriental touch. Prince was not interested in finding a Hungarian ancestral homeland. He was interested in geography and geomorphology, perhaps bringing Turgan Berdike Ullu, a young Kyrgyz man to Hungary for the Manas translation also weakened the orientalist approach. Almashi returned from Central Asia, accompanied by Turgan. In Almashi's castle in Hungary, they translated Manas, a part of it, just we know 15,000 uh, rows from this uh, ep Kyrgyz epic, which they collected during the expedition. Almashi published the shortest expert, 73 lines, uh, from Manas in the Hungarian Orientalist periodical Keleti Semler. Almashi was divorced in 1912 and moved out from of the family castle. He gave up his aristocratic lifestyle and dedicated himself to research. But like so many others, the First World War brought significant changes to his life. He served as a major in the army. Many major. Many other male family members also served and some of them were injured. After the war, he was impoverished. Contrast made before the war lost their validity. Almashi had given his land up to his elder son as part of the divorce agreement, and now his son and former wife decided not to pay Almashi his part of the family income. He moved to Graz with Vera Apraxin, where they lived, in his daughter's Georgina's villa. Several times he retreated with Vera to his sisters, Mary's and Margarita's relatives' castles. He devoted most of his time to zoology and wrote a doctoral study on vitalism in the context of zoology. He died Graz in 1933. So just the next uh, part is about Almashi and Turanese. And I think is so important, especially the first part, because it is uh, practically cited from his book and gave a, a sense about how Hungarians think about uh, Turanese. So just some uh, translations from his book. Hungarian Orientalism has deep historical roots. Following Friar Julianus' journey east at the beginning of the 13th century, Hungarian travelers continued to search for their Hungarian roots in the east from the beginning of 19th century. Here we need to mention Sándor Kőrösi Csoma Tibetan studies, Antal Regulis Obiugrik, Armin, Armin Vanberis and George Almasis Central Asian, Benedek Baratoshi East Siberian, Jenő Zicis Caucasian and Siberian, and Bela Sechenyi's East Asian expeditions. 
Two important factors should be mentioned regarding the origin of Hungarians. Firstly, the so-called ugric turek War at the end of the 19th century. And secondly, Turanism flourishing before the First World War and between the two wars. Both these factors influenced public opinion and education. The ugric turek War was an intellectual debate about whether the Hungarian language was of Ugric or Turkic origin. The Hungarian version of Turanis opposed the Finnish version by including the Altaic branch, Turkic, Mongolic, Tunguzic, Japanese, and Korean, as related languages. It also opposed the Turkish version called Pan-Turkism, but including the Uralic branch, Obi-Ugric, and Samoyed. In Turanis, ural Altaic ethnic groups are unified by a common race, or we could say by a common culture. After the Second World War, Uralic and Altaic uh, linguistic studies unwillingly kept Turanese alive. There was significant academic fieldwork in Hungary in the interwar period as a compensatory activity Hungarian territories lost after the Parish Trianon Treaty in 1920. Political and economic colonial ideas and fantasies dominated Hungarian activities related to the East. In reality, academic fieldwork could no longer be conducted in the territories of the Soviet Union because the idea of Hungarian Turanis united the inner enemies of the Bolshevik state, native peoples fighting for their own national sovereignty. The Ugric Turkic War and Turanis provide a good framework for interpreting Hungarian research activities in the East. To understand Hungarian Turanis and Almashi relationships with it, it is important to put this phenomenon in a historical perspective. In 1867, the Hungarian and Austrian, Austrian ruling classes made an agreement, a kind of treaty which uh, formed the basis of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy between 1867 and 1918. From 1867, it seems that the future of the Hungarian people and society would depend on the partnership they could find within outside, outside the monarchy. After some time, it became easier to find such coalitions outside Hungarian territory. One of the experimental fields of that aim became the Turanist movement, which was about the revival of the idea of Hungarian Eastern interconnectedness. In addition to the Finnish and Turkic branches, this included other possible connectors, connections, even Japanese. Some terrorists have recently attempted to present Hungarian Turanis not only in contrast to the current and intensifying ultra-right political trends of four day, but also to show it is as an example of sites theoretical criticism and to justify its relevance not only to British or French Orientalists, but also to Eastern and Asian areas. So here uh, there are some uh, links in uh, this line. And uh, just I would like to show uh, a picture, which is important. So um, top we see Cholnoki, the translator of Almashi's book, uh, left side, in the mid, uh, Almashi, then uh, more Deci, who was a, an alpinist and Caucasus explorer. Then sitting, uh, we can see uh, Lajos Lóci, the chief geologist in Hungary, also a Turanist person. In the mid sitting, Armin Van Beri, who was a kind of uh, a mentor of Almashi. And then in the uh, sitting the right side, Sven Hedin, the Swedish explorer, who um, was uh, one of the 
biggest member of this great game between Russia and uh, British influence in Central Asia. So this picture is a kind of uh, um, uh, a fact, as a fact, show that what is the place Almashi among these uh, uh, great persons uh, at that time. Um, so, just uh, I, I need to say something about our field work uh, in, uh, in Central Asia in the last uh, five years. There was one important point when. I begin to understand that uh, maybe it was not uh, really the right way. We can see Almash much more complex because uh, previously we, and mostly the Hungarian social anthropologists and me and others and orientalist persons thought about Almash as uh, uh, one of the great interpreters of uh, um, Kazakh and Kyrgyz culture. So we used his book um, from this point of view. But uh, in um, 2018, when we, uh, there was a Hungarian initiation to uh, make a, a, a memorial desk for Almashi in Alma, Almaty in the city museum, in the uh, wall of the city museum. There was a conference, a workshop, and then uh, one lady, uh, Nelia Buketova, a local historian, drew, the, drew our attention to the unique local historical value of Almashi's photos about Almaty. She also connected us with Natalia Karayeva, the Semireche, uh, Semireche governor, Yonov's great granddaughter, who now lives in St. Petersburg. So, and uh, then uh, we met uh, Natalia Kareva and um, found materials uh, about Almashi. Uh, the book in Hungarian was in his in her shelf, and also a letter about uh, his plans, Almashi's plans, and. Uh, I begin to think that uh, Almashi, it was very, very important for Almashi to, to build a, a good uh, relationship with uh, bureaucrats, chief bureaucrats in Russia at that time. And uh, all the, and I, I begin re read the book of Almashi from this point of view to see a kind of, uh, mm, to, to, to find a, an imperialist, orientalist approach uh, to Kyrgyz people and to fieldwork and to the expedition. And I, I think it was, for me, a very important. And uh, I have a long section about this uh, imperialist, orientalist, and bureaucratic uh, details, uh, which was not uh, well studied uh, in Almash's first book. Here I wouldn't like to uh, give details because of the photos and the photos are much more important for me. And now I would like to show some, so this is the meeting and uh, in the front line, Nelia Beketova and uh, background, David and me. Uh, this is Yonov. Uh, governor, Semirechi governor. Um, actually, we cannot see. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Coordinate, oh. we cannot see the. Oh, process. just a moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, thank you for this information. Now that I read him, see. Ah, извините, хорошо. Я показываю. So, this, this, I want to показывать you. This uh, here is Amashi and Archer. Before the uh, second expedition uh, in Graz, this is the route of the expedition, more and less, which we know now. So it is from Andijan to uh, Karakol, Narinkol, Jarkent, and not Almaty, but Orenburg, but also there is a branch to uh, Kulja. 
So this is the um, at Kriti Epismo, the, practically the passport of Amashi uh, in the first expedition, which he uh, uh, received from um, Yonov. It has a this this has a, a Russian side. So this is the uh, Hungarian Turanist uh, a picture which show the place of Almashi in the top row, mid Almashi, uh, right side Cholnoki, the translator, you know, Cholnoki, uh, left side, sorry, right side is more Deci, the Caucasus traveler and alpinist, sitting uh, left side, Lajos Lóci, the chief geologist of the time, also a Turanist person, uh, a China traveler, uh, in the second half of uh, 19th century. And uh, in the mid, Armin Vanberi, in the pictures, it is exactly that uh, time. It is uh, 1906, so exactly. And uh, sitting right side, Sven Hedin, uh, as I mentioned, sorry, losing the picture. This is the memorial desk in Almaty in the uh, city museum, in the wall of the city museum in Kazakh and Hungarian language. And this is the, that conference which I mentioned uh, in front line, uh, Nelia Buketova and background David and me. And I, I found that this is an important moment when we begin to um, uh, see uh, in, from a different angle Almash's work to include uh, this orientalist and uh, imperialist uh, approach. So this is uh, a picture of uh, Yonov, general uh, governor Yonov uh, from uh, 1899 to uh, 1910. This is the letter of uh, Armash, uh, right side in Russian, written to Yonov about uh, before the expedition, asking uh, help, uh, assistance uh, from the governor, found at the great granddaughter of uh, Yonov archive. And uh, there are some pictures about uh, this uh, Turgan Berdike Ulu, the Kyrgyz boy. Uh, bringing to Hungary and working on Manas. The, we, we have an exact number, this 15,000 uh, lines translated uh, into Hungarian language, but the text is uh, unknown where we can find. So we have only description about it. So this is the other side of his, uh, practically it was a working permission, uh, visit, visit near Karta. Turgan, it is from Karakol, Przewask. Uh, Turgan worked as an uh, educator of uh, Almashi's children. Uh, left side, the senior children, Janos. Right side, the English patient, Laszlo Almashi. Uh, and this is Turgan oriental picture in the castle, yard of the castle, garden of the castle of Almashi. Uh, so, and this is the two photo albums, uh, which I would like to say some, some words. Uh, and then just, I try to show some other pictures. Yes, so I begin to read the conclusion of, about this photo, photographic analysis and then uh, show some pictures uh, and that, that is probably all my presentation. So the visual perspective of Hungarian Orientalism. How do the photographs of Almash's second expedition to the Kyrgyz and Kazakh, Kazakhs, Kazakh people show that it was a colon, colonial expedition, that the third, furthest periphery of the border zone of Russian empire? 
what the relationships can be seen, what are the attitudes to the local people. In these photos, in these photos, one can see that most of the infrastructure necessary for the Russian military and colonial empire had already been set up and was functional, although the overall imperial mechanism still lay under the guard guardianship of the Russian army. So just I show some pictures about this. So it was one topic which was my interest. One moment. So it is, it is the Russians of the church, uh, Orthodox church in Karakol and some pictures about the Russians. The Russian state developed its own little Russia world, uh, where army officers, imperial bureaucrats, and their families felt safe and comfortable. Just some more pictures. Yes. Uh, colonial and imperial phenomena were interwoven. Seasonal foodstuffs, meat, cereals, strawberry, hay were provided. Locals were also able to use this infrastructure belonging to the establishment for their own benefit. Foreign expeditions like Almash's brought extra income to the nomads. And these travels through vast areas also strengthened the local extended networks, in particular for the Jigit and the horse owners. At this time, the period of military expeditions was over. Yonov's North Pamir uh, 1891 expedition had happened more than 15 years before. Previous scientific research expeditions led by Valihanov, Trevalsky, and Radlov were regarded by the locals as kind of Russian spy tours, as they were su supported by the Russians, Russian Imperium and served its interest. It is noteworthy that Almash's expedition was the first not to be regarded by the Kyrgyz as such an enterprise. By this time, expeditions were mainly scientific and many were led by foreigners. The foreigners also led many hunting expeditions. Nearer the border, just to show you. Nearer the uh, border of the empire, colonial trade became intensified. For example, Almash's tiger's hunt on the Kazakh side of the Russian Chinese border. The Pamir and the Tian Shan mountains were barred uh, from uh, foreigners and they could only enter on an exceptional basis. The Almash's expedition was issued with special permit to enter, which shows its colonial nature in this context. Approaching the Chinese border, the Almash's expedition also became close to the Russian-British border and came across some British colonial features. It is worth noting that no photographs were shot once they crossed that border and that period is also missing from Almash's diary. So we can only show that how the expedition uh, closing to the border. So we see some Kalmyk people, Kalmak people and uh, Manju officers. It's all the Russian size and it is the uh, uh, hiding up to the uh, pass. It seems that Ormash himself fan, felt confident at the periphery of the Russian Empire, probably partly because of his former experience with Austro-Hungarian imperial institutions. He had worked in the Austro-Hungarian Joint Foreign Ministry and was a member of a ruling aristocracy. The excitement of discovering something new, unknown, for example, a grave, 
to his imperial experience can be seen in only one group of shorts. So it is also uh, uh, the pass is something similar, but we have a photo about the yes, this photo it's uh, exploring something. All cases of Orientalism are heterogeneous, and this applies to the activity of Giorgio Almasi as well. He was an aristocrat, and this can have a cosmopolitan connotation as aristocrats often regard themselves as above nations, nation states, and ethnicities. He was a Hungarian, a member of the imperial monarchy of Austro-Hungary, and European. Within the monarchy of Austro-Hungary, he, he is from the border of Hungary, Vash country in West Hungary, and East Austria, Burgenland. Before the First World War, he lived in West Hungary, within the Austro-Hungarian monarchy in mainly German-speaking area. After the war, he lived in the eastern part of Austria. He published his monograph of the 1900 expedition in Hungarian. Actually, it was originally written in German and translated by Czolnoki into Hungarian. In fact, he wrote his diary and his letters to his Italian wife in German. He also spoke French, of course, and used this to communicate via elder daughter uh, as interpreter with the governor, uh, you know. His first wife was an Italian and his second of Russian origin. His surname sound aristocratic and ethnically Hungarian. The literal translation could roughly be the one from apple or hide. But once communists took over in Hungary, his aristocratic family was forced to move to Austria. His son, who bore a common Hungarian name, Laszlo, became an Africanist, and the romanticized feature film was made about his life with the title of English Patient. Almash's friendship with Archer can be seen as an orientalist austro hungarian relationship. Meanwhile, he was on bad terms with commoner Hungarian geographer, Jula Prince. Almasi joined the Turanist movement, which embraced major Hungarian nationalistic element. The core of its ideology is extremely orientalist, looking eastward to find keen relationships in support of a national identity and so find an improved status in the abundant diversity of Central Europe. Yet, by projecting Hungarianness onto the Kyrgyz, he might also have unearthed aspect of the Kyrgyzness of the Hungarians. This projection at the time was based on only on legend, legends related to Kumans and assimilated but remembered as an originally Turkic group among the Hungarians. Therefore, these ideations could also serve to part partially dissolve some of the heavy criticism of Western Orientalist traits and even Western supremacy. Such perspectives may partially soften a potential say type criticism of Almash's underlying Orientalism. The question of to what extent could bringing a Kyrgyz boy to Hungary with the aim of translating a Kyrgyz epic be regarded as an Orientalist adventure remains open. Almashi may have just been following general genre, genres of expedition culture of his time without looking for spe specific interrelatedness. The contrast in Almash's attitudes to the Russian and British empires may require further analysis in the future. Almash seemed able to use the Russian imperial advantages without being absorbed by them. He was able to keep his contacts with them to the minimum necessary. On the other hand, he felt quite uneasy with the British and was critical of the emerging British com competition in the area. This is the great game. Just as was noted by Said, the Hungarian explorers showed signs of ambiguity, just like other European, German, and Austrian travelers. 
On the other hand, Omash's expedition also represented a common enterprise between foreign and locals. The hierarchical relationship among the Hungarians can be clearly detected. Omash and Archer were an, in an easy friendship, whereas tension was palpable between Omash and Prince. Prince only appears on the periphery of photographs, and the two are never seen together. In contrast, the friendly ties between Olmash and Kutsenko are obvious. The latter represented the Russian Empire, though not at the higher level of Governor Yonov. Kutsenko was important, just I show a picture. Kutsenko. So here is Kutsenko standing before uh, front of the uh, native school in Karakol. Was an important for Alm Kutsenko was important for Almashi for a number of reasons. He provided lodgings in Prevask directly to Turgan and managed the money's transcriptions. The photographs show no sign that Almashi was highlighting the possible relatedness of the Hungarian and Kuman and Kyrgyz people. He doesn't romanticize the Kyrgyz nor portray them as exotic. It can be noted that he was also interested in the Russians living in the ter territory. The, the Kyrgyz do appear in the hunting photos, as we show, as we see here. One moment. So, all the three photographies. Just a moment, yeah. Photos where they might at first seem anachronistic and would merit criticism from Said. However, Almashi might have just been following the accepted style of hunting photographs of the time. It doesn't appear that either Almashi or any other members of the expedition made significant efforts to familiarize themselves with the life of the Kyrgyz and Kazakh in great depth. Nonetheless, Almashi was in close contact with the Jigits, who would have been able to offer a rich source of knowledge about the life of the locals, as they had the broadest knowledge of the life of the Kyrgyz. The photos do provide objective documentation of the activities of the expedition, including the work of the Kyrgyz Jigits. Many Hungarians, including travelers and the explorers, have identified themselves as intermediaries between East and West. They have regarded themselves as Western men since they joined to the West by converting the Christianity more than a thousand years ago. However, they have not regarded themselves as fully Western, but rather as the most Western living Eastern people, or even as representing other Eastern people in the West. It's a kind of self-orientalism. Criticism of site formulations are exemplified in the common moments of Hungarians and Kyrgyz on the expedition. For example, when the researchers and Jigis both got excited something new about something new, or when Turgan decided to come to Europe with Almashi to help him with the Manas translation. This joint research project between Almashi and Turgan could be interpreted as an example of true or clean Orientalism. However, according, according to the custom of publica publications at that time, they could not publish the work under both of their names. Come only, publications joint works between Hungarian and Central Asia, Kyrgyz, Uzbek, Kazakh, Karakalpak, Bakshkirian researchers still await their time even today. So it is our task. The Hungarian foreign ministry was the main supporter of the, our Central Asian journey in uh, 2017. Its goal may have been to create a positive atmosphere for Hungarian political and economic projects. Through presenting and displaying the Hungarian Orientalist tradition, mainly through photo exhibitions. It has been characteristic that it was the Hungarian embassies who have been the main organizers of our projects in their area. 
thus cultural, political and economic spheres have been reconnected. During our journeys, we also use the presentation of the Hungarian Orientalist research tradition to carry out new research. Our hope was that by emphasizing the common elements of our past history, we could form a strong base for setting out new common research with local researchers and their intellectuals. This intention met with acceptance and support, support not only in Central Asia, but also within the current Hungarian governing administration. Photographic and other visual aspects became of greater importance when written sources, the usual field of the analysis for sight, are either not available or difficult to access, such as was the case here since they were only published in Hungarian. Orientalist here, Hungarian Orientalist may not always seem obvious to people who examine these photos today. Expertise is often needed to see the Orientalist nature of those times, which can be partly obscured by underlying sometimes palimpsest layers. The photographic material help to accredit our mission with the local people. Meanwhile, they also aided our anthropological analysis. Today, there are few signs of anything oriental where Olmash is practiced his European orientalist. His grandchild was able to keep family photographs and some furniture in an apartment in central Vienna, Austria. Only some items of Eastern jewelry remain. The fur of the Tian Shan tiger in front of the sofa and the suitcase full of rem remnants of birds are all gone. Once the granddaughter died in 2014, nobody who had ever seen these artifacts was left. The gems in the old jewelry have been taken out of the original Eastern context and now decorate modern Western ones. Almash's castle is no longer in the possession of the, of the family, as his sons Janos and Laszlo Almashi died without offspring. The current uh, proprietor has not given permission to do research in the castle. Almashi's sister, Cap collection contains just a few pieces of Eastern origin, and his brother has a decorative wooden saddle that the expedition brought back. Thank you very much for the attention and maybe you can ask and just I show some pictures and thank you so much uh, professor uh, this is actually a very uh, big contribution to our studies these are uh, historic uh, pictures uh, probably most of us have seen them uh, for the first time uh, it's uh, it would be a good I think advance if we can uh, make these uh, works uh, translated actually to English or maybe even Turkish, maybe Kazakh. Uh, it could be a big, big contribution to the literature. These are very invaluable, so to say, uh, artifacts actually. So I would like to open up the floor for uh, questions from the audience. Uh, any comments, questions? Please. <laughs> any fascinating findings you have? Uh, uh, yeah, Almas, Almas Bey, Almas Mirza. А, я спасибо вам большое за очень интересный доклад и презентацию. Если можно, я на русском спрошу. Как я вижу, вы хорошо владеете русским языком. Меня интересует такой момент. Насколько знаком был э, э, он с э, польскими э, ну, в общем, записками, дневниками польских путешественников, которые были сыльными на территории Казахстана? Это Янушкевич, там, Бронислав Залецкий, Густав Зелицкий. И знаком ли он был с фотографиями Константина Лазари? Тоже у него очень интересные фотографии, есть тоже касательно вот лица, семеречия. 
И вопрос, вот, вот эти его фотографии, которые представлены, они были все подписаны или пришлось идентифицировать вот этих людей или там местоположение, вот это все. Спасибо большое. Как делать это? По-русски отвечать или по-английски? Как вам удобно будет? Нет, этот организатор. Как вам удобно будет? Потому что сейчас мы закончили семинар, потом, поэтому вы можете ответить на любой язык, хотите. Хорошо. Uh, да, он сам не знал эти людей, не польских. Uh, как... У нас есть uh, описание, uh, какими людьми он uh, переписал перед uh, второй экспедицией, особенно первый, там очень детально uh, мы знаем это. Этот еще у меня изуча... изучали и... Я думаю, очень интересный будет этот следующий этап, когда будем знать, кто были эти люди. Пока знаем, что какие происхождения, где они жили, чем они занимались, и это все. Но э, глубоко мы не знаем этот. Э, он, э, как я намекал, он э, очень... Э, Глубоко был вовлечен, например, алматинский социаль, социальную жизнь в том момент. Но это значит, что он каждый день, каждый вечер ездил гости разные интеллектуалы, которые там были. И так встретился ваш архитектура главным, который, которым занимали, занимается Анелия Быкатова. И, и там очень детально описание, как были эти парты, как это вечеринки. Это очень интересно. Это тоже мы никогда не доценили, эти вещи. Этот, это не моя фикция, это не моя идея, потому что когда мы с женой ездили в Санкт-Петербург и встретились с правнучкой, праправнучкой Йоновым, она, даже я скажу, не она, ее бабушка нами, нами, отмечала в книге Омаши, который писан, писан по-венгерски, страницы, где пишет о семи, о члене семи. И когда мы встретились, первое дело не было чай пить или шоколад или что-то такое, а сразу хоть примерно переводить, что пишет Олмаши о них. И потом мне это надо было, надо было и описать. Но из этого я понял, что ничего не случайно. Олмаши хорошо знал, что это важно для них. Он положил туда фотографии. Он положил, и он показывал это все в таком форме, когда написал. Он написал по-немецки. Он, наверное, думал, что когда-то это будет издано по-немецки. Именно в таком форме, где легко это читать. И люди понимают, он узнает тебя, себя. И я думаю, что этот мир в венгерской стране недоценили. И только начинается это время перечитать не только Омаши, а все путешественники, антропологи в Венгрии и, и, и понять, как они строили эти отношения. Может, переводить или не надо?